Hey, welcome to you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Doc Cummings, and a wonderful treat for you today, actually for me, <laughs> Mary Evely at See Me Winery Chef. It's nice to see you again. Oh, thank you. And we have a real treat for you. Uh, Mary has a cookbook, and the name of the cookbook is From the Vintner's Table? No, The Vintner's Table Cookbook. Well, I, I was close. <laughs> close. <laughs> but what we're going to do first, ladies and gentlemen, is um, watch a pro at work in the kitchen, and are you gonna make up, what are you going to make up in the kitchen for us? Oh, I thought it would be fun to uh, do some risotto. Nice rainy day, good for risotto. Okay. Now we'll switch to the kitchen. And I can't wait for the end product. I thought it would be really interesting to look at risotto and process because so many people are afraid of risotto. And right now I'm heating the pan. This is the, the hardest thing for cooks to learn but it makes so much difference if you warm your pan up on the stove before you start cooking, you get a better result. So I'm heating up the pan a little bit. Now when you make risotto, you need to have a little bit of fat and you can use butter or you can use olive oil. I'm gonna use a little of each. And the first thing you do when you make risotto is is you put in your what could be called is called odori in uh, Italian. It's called soffritto. Uh, but basically, it's the aromatics. There's onions. And this can vary depending on what the, ris the flavor of the final risotto. I'm putting in some carrots in here. Oh, that probably sounded funny, me breaking through that saran wrap. This is um, uh, rutabaga, parsnip. Because this is going to be, these are root vegetables are really good for um, a red wine risotto. There's another thing is I always use a wooden spoon when I'm making risotto. Risotto is really easy to make. Uh, that's why we're here to show you how easy it is to make. Um, but there are certain things that really seem to make it work best. And one of them is using a wooden spoon. And I actually read this story about some Italian chef who was horrified when he saw somebody making risotto and they weren't using a wooden spoon. And since it's a, uh, an Italian dish, we'll believe that chef. Okay, so once the uh, aromatics have softened a little bit, then you add your rice. The rice for risotto is, uh, you probably heard of arborio. It doesn't actually have to be arborio, but arborio is a rice, a specific rice in a group of rices called japonica. So actually, Japanese rice would work, except the grains are so tiny, it makes it pretty hard to control. But this rice has a hard kernel with a starchy outer core, and that starchy outer core will start releasing into the liquid when you start adding liquid on this. Now this one is going to be, as I think I mentioned, a red wine risotto. So at this point, now that you've got all the rice grains coated with that oil and butter, put in a little wine, whatever you're planning to have with the risotto. This is a Cabernet. And let that cook down. And then you start adding your stock. And this is another thing. There's a real temptation to, to take shortcuts in the kitchen. And sometimes you can, and sometimes you can't. And this is one place where you can't take a shortcut in the kitchen. And that is, I have also on the stove here um, some stock that is simmering. And this is essential. So you have to dirty two pots to do this. So once that wine is cooked down, you add stock, hot stock. And this could be this, you know, you could use whatever, vegetable stock, chicken stock. And then you control your heat. You want to get your heat so that it's bubbling gently, not boiling furiously. 
not just laying there like a dead fish, but just little gentle bubbles like that. And you want to maintain that bubbling throughout the cooking. You should never cook any harder than that. Now what happens from this point, you see I'm not stirring it at all right now. You don't have to stand here and stir all day long. But what you do is you watch it every once in a while, you come over and say, well, oh, nope, there's still plenty of liquid in there. When the liquid cooks down, that a lot of the top of your rice and vegetables is exposed, then you would add your next uh, dipper of stock. Now what we're going to do here for the sake of time is I'm going to switch pans and we're going to look at a stock, at a pot <laughs> that uh, I started earlier just so you can, I want you to see the end process here. This is a different flavor of risotto just to make you totally confused. This one we're going to have with uh, reserve chardonnay. This is a wild mushroom risotto and I started the same way I started that other one. I did everything you saw me do on that other one and cooked it a little bit so that we don't have to wait, stand around and watch the pot bubble. Got to get it back to a bubble now because this was off the heat. Um, I started with, for this one, just with onion and then added the rice and then I added some of the reserve Chardonnay and then I added mushroom soaking liquid that was, uh, there's some dried porcini mushrooms in here. This is a wild mushroom risotto we're working on. And um, now there it's starting to bubble. Okay, now you probably want, it's going to take some time at this point before it quite gets to where I want it to be. This is the magic of risotto because you can see, I, I hope you can see that what was originally just chicken stock is now starting to get very thick and rich. And that is that starchy layer coming off of the rice. And it's what makes risotto creamy. It's very interesting. I've read so many recipes for risotto. I've read so many recipes for risotto that uh, ask for an addition of cream. And that's a total misunderstanding of this dish. What makes it creamy is this kind of rice. And it does its little magic. It makes this incredibly creamy sauce just by that outer starchy layer going into the liquid and thickening it. Now at this point, as I mentioned, this is a wild mushroom risotto. So at this point, I've sauteed some wild mushrooms. I've got the dried porcini, some shiitake, and some cremini and I sauteed them very quickly in butter beforehand because that really develops their flavor uh, better than cooking it in the liquid. And I'm adding that in. And then you come to the next, whoops, we come to the next crucial uh, spot, which is at a certain point, you have to taste it. You know, in order to tell exactly when it's done, we know it's close to done because it's got that creamy, uh, look to it, but the rice kernels have to be just right. And I'd say we are there. So this is what I do. I turn off the heat. I make one last little tiny addition of stock. And you know, if it's no holds barred, you could add a little more butter at this point, particularly for a Chardonnay dish. A little more butter will um, sort of match up with that butteriness in the Chardonnay. But I, I think about the fat that I eat, and I often just make risotto with oil only. I don't make that final addition of butter, and I think it's just fine. That Italian chef I quoted earlier would have to put in that final thing, butter. And that's it. That is ready to serve. I'd serve that with some grated Asiago cheese and maybe we'll just put in a nice little sprinkle of chopped Italian parsley, put it in right at the end so